Hello again, it's Elizabeth and I'm here in my art loft and I wasn't supposed to show you that yet. Um, today we're going to put the covers on the book and we're going to start uh, with the pages. I don't think I'm going to get to the fringe today, but we might. I think um, I may have shown how to do that, but I'll have to go get some beads if I decide to do the fringe. The fringe is, of course, put... I did... I did sit... Last time I left you, I only had one signature sewed in. Now I have sewn all the rest of them in. You can see how pretty it looks on the back of the book where you can see the um, signatures in the, in the cutout that I made for it. Uh, I sewed the bottom part with the knots on the inside because I didn't want to make any fringe from that. This will have dangles hanging down all the way down the spine, almost to the bottom of it, and um, that's what it'll look like. Okay, so uh, today we're going to do the front cover and the back cover, and I've already done the back cover, but I'll go ahead and do the front cover for you and show, we ha show you how we do it. We had, we glued up these, had most of them glued up yesterday, and I did put them under weights last night so that they'd be almost flat. However, whenever you put your wet glue on it and uh, attach it to the inside, it actually rewarps the cardboard, the board that's in there. So anytime you're putting any kind of wet glue, whether it's uh, paste, 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 like yes paste, or if it's glue like uh, art glitter glue, it's going to uh, potentially warp your board toward the wet, so toward the part that's wet and the part that's wet of course is where you're putting your glue and I'm just basically smearing glue or uh, dispensing glue all over the the board getting a pretty good coverage I don't have to have it in every single little spot because really you just need your edges to hold and some of the center to hold so that it doesn't uh, pull away from the edges so I'm also going to put glue on this side which is the, because this is the, the inside front, IF is inside front. And I, I designated that so I wouldn't put the one that I didn't, that I wanted on the back. I wanted to put it on the back and I didn't want it on the front. So I designated one front, one back, so that I would get them in the right place because invariably if I don't do that, I will get them in the wrong place. I also put a top, a T for the top so that I didn't put it upside down. I have done that on occasion and it's very frustrating because sometimes you can take rip it off and redo it but sometimes you can't so I want to try to prevent as many problems as possible so I just mark my stuff and it's nobody's going to see that because it's going to be inside your book now I can just push flip this over to here but what I really want to do is to make sure that it is down against the table when I pull that uh, cover the craft tax, the brown stuff, up against it. And the reason for that is so that I get a nice, crisp uh, fold of where the back meet, or the front in this case, meets the craft tax stuff. And then I'm pushing with my fingers against that really solidly. And what I usually do, and what I will do now, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I pull this off the edge of my desk, and then I have my desk here, and I push down all of this to make sure that it's as, as solidly against there as possible. And I can move your, my camera over so you can see that temporarily. Just got to remember to move it back. Anytime I move it, I'm like, okay. I also make sure that the top and the bottom, that this is centered in the middle of it. So I have a little tiny bit showing here on the edge here little tiny bit showing there on that edge and on the back and on the back it was the same way so that's a good thing that looks about the same as the back did <coughs> but we will we will push this down for a little while and make sure that there's no glue that is coming out the edges because we don't want glue balls showing on our back cover or on on the edges of our back cover and the next thing that we need to do is to put on the I, sorry, this is the front. I keep saying back. I already did the back. Make sure that this is a 90 degree uh, fold here where your back meets your spine. And then we're going to put the front cover on, which has the top measured, top listed there. 
And you can see that it doesn't come all the way to the very edge here. I did not want it sticking out for any reason whatsoever. And so when it finally gets put together, you can see that there will be kind of a little tiny uh, crevice in there. Okay, that's what the back looks like. You've already got the back together. Okay, so now we're going to put the front on. And once again, smooth that down. Make sure that is as solidly against there as possible. And then to put the front on, it's exactly the same thing. You can use other glues. Uh, the reason I like to use this is that it does dry pretty fast. It, uh, it with When you have such a thin line that this makes when it's coming out from here, it doesn't spread a lot, so it's not going to go. I mean, it shouldn't spread, really, from where it is here out to the... Um, it shouldn't spread to the edge and come out showing in the, on the thing. I need to make sure that I can hold this while I'm doing this. And I should have probably done it on the board itself first. Just want a pretty good coverage so that it is um, covered. <laughs> yeah. And same thing on the front. But remember that the, the, the brown stuff doesn't come quite out to that edge. So we want to be a little, uh, little farther from that when we're uh, putting on this cover. Ideally, when I would do this not on camera, I would put these under weights and possibly overnight so that they would be for sure uh, glued as, as well as they can be glued to each other. But uh, today I'm just going to glue them and clamp them for a little while and then uh, get on with doing the pages because that's much more exciting doing the pages than it is uh, just watching the glue dry. And that looks like plenty. So we just put that facing that. It's almost more than my fingers can hold. And what I'm trying to do here is to make sure that the front cover is even with the fore edge of the book, the front edge of the book, and even with the bottom and the sides, uh, the bottom and the top of the book. And then of course, even with the back. But the back, it may not look as even, even if it is even because you have that fold of the craft text there that's, that's beyond the, uh, the inside front cover. So I'm holding that, pushing against that, make sure I've got it even and in there because I want that to be, to be stuck properly. And I have to be careful because the, uh, the glue will let it slide for a second. And of course I cannot get this pin in this bottle. There we go. But then after that, it's going to um, hopefully attach. Now, on the back cover, I had a little difficulty because this thing wanted to warp. And it wanted to warp away from the glue because the glue would expand that side of the, of the uh, front or the back. And it's nice and even around here. You can see how even that is. Let's see if there's any glue in there. Okay, and you can see that it's trying to pull away there. So what I'm going to do is use these nice little clamps that I've gotten from somewhere and put them right here, right there, and right here, so that that front edge will be for sure glued properly. Ouch. And I got a little bit, oh, no extra glue there. Okay, I need to go get a couple more clamps because it looks like it's trying to pull away at the back side as well. And I'm going to push you around this way so that I can start on doing the pages. And hopefully I can do some pages while you guys are here. Let me get another clamp or two. Actually, uh, uh, just normal clothespins will work as well. which I have lots of clothespins. Okay, let's scoot this back around so that we're more centered on the table. And the clothespins we're going to put on the back here. Because I think it'll fit in there. Yep, good. And that will hold that glue while it's, it's setting up. And it doesn't have to hold for very long because that glue goes pretty fast. 
I don't see any glue that has squished out. Just kind of push it in the middle. Now, if you have watched my other videos of doing books similar to this, when I've done the uh, journals with the open spine or with even the closed spine and so on, I did some that I put a cord along this um, set of dots here, this, this um, where I was sewing it in. I put a cord along there that I tied in as I was sewing in the signatures. And then I ran that between the outside cover and the inside cover through a little uh, channel that I cut in the craft text, okay? And then that made my tie come out the front, and then that was what I tied it closed with. Well, I decided on this one not to do that. So on this one, I decided that I'm going to use some silk and just run it under these threads. See how that would go under that thread. And and make my closure just from a piece of silk that is run under the, this thread. This thread and this thread. So you'd have one there and then under this thread as well. But all I have is white silk and lots of people have sari silk and it's multicolored and it's beautiful stuff. But all I had was white silk until I decided, well, if you've got white silk and you've got stuff that makes colors like paint or alcohol ink, then either case, I could make, I hope you can still hear me, I could make uh, my silk change from being just white silk into being something colorful that would be more interesting than just plain white silk under that uh, thing there. Okay, so how to get it under there. First thing, I mean, it's easy enough. You can just take two pieces of paper like this. You can stick your silk in between those two pieces of paper. Maybe. And then when you pull those through, your silk will come through too. Okay? So this was silk that I uh, tore into being this size. And I dyed it with uh, alcohol inks. And you can see that it kind of blended and there's still some white spots and I don't mind the white spots because then it's kind of a contrast to the colors that are there. But if I were, this is probably not what I would use for this particular book because the outsides have mainly the orange and the blue and turquoise and the gold so I probably would use orange and blue and turquoise and I don't think I have any gold alcohol ink. But that is one possibility. And I actually might make it a little thicker because, uh, well, I don't know, it would work that thick. Okay, so that was one possibility that I did. And unfortunately, when you tear the silk, it has a little bit of ravels on it. And they do irritate me because my fingers are, in the wintertime, get a uh, little chapped. And so they get a little bit of uh, areas that will just grab that silk and hold <laughs> See, I got another piece of silk there. Hold on to it, and then I end up just, you know, having these strings here and there. Okay. The other thing I did was to use um, some of my Extreme Sheen Gold. Now, can you see that, how sparkly that is? And I think this is what I'm going to actually do. This is a little bit wider piece of... of uh, could use both of them on one. I mean, that would be pretty to, to have them both go through there like that, through the back like that. And then at the fore edge, you could tie them, you know, singly or both or whatever. That would be pretty. Maybe I'll do that. But let go. At, at any rate, this, it, it actually, I think it uh, makes the edges e easier to not have the uh, threads. There are still some threads hanging out there, but not as many. But this gold seems to sparkle off just a little bit. But it's the Extreme Sheen Gold Paint, which is used throughout the book. And I think that would be good enough to uh, use. And you can see that you can see through that just barely. So when it is, you know, used, you know, pulled through under here and tied, then it's going to be, um, I mean, it's going to, it's going to show a little bit of the, of the stuff under it. 
when it's tied through. So I think I like that good enough, well enough to use for the, um, for the, for the stuff. So that's going to be my tie and I will put that on after it's, it's finished with. And I think I'm going to make this just a little bit, well, no, I think maybe that thickness and then it will, will crimp, crimp just a little bit or maybe a little larger even but I did it two different experiments I made one I put one of them I took my gold extreme sheen gold this is the metallic paint I'm talking about which is what I dearly love and should have stock in because I say it so often that people I'm sure somebody's going out there buying it but this works really well for taking up your jelly prints off of your gel plate but in this case, it's also, it didn't change the feel of the silk very much. I mean, just a little maybe, but not enough to, uh, you know, to not use it. But I put it in a little container, this little container, and I put some water in it, mixed it up, and had a really thin solution of the paint. And uh, I did show you that, yeah, you can see that. Of the paint, and then uh, used it on this put my silk down first actually I took this silk and I put water on it and put it in there and I'm gonna look at the other one that I did that had uh, just um, I put it in dry and I don't know if there's a difference Okay, so this one I put in, I wetted the silk and then put it in. And this one, in my right hand here, I uh, just put in dry and then uh, put it in. Of course, it got totally wet with paint anyway, so I don't know the difference. I think the, I don't know, they look basically the same. I may iron them, not that it would do any good because once you're using it, uh, and look, we've got a wad of uh, threads there, so it's got all painty, a paint wad of threads. Now I've got silk with gold on it. Put that over there out of the way. But they look virtually the same, so I'll do I'll do both uh, both of the ties the same so that they will look exactly the same, but they, they virtually look the same. Okay, so enough of that, and our, uh, our cover should be dry enough to get on with showing you how I go about making the pages to be the right width for the book. Because obviously, obviously they're sticking out from the fore edge of the book and we don't want that. We don't mind if they're a little bit shorter than the book but we don't want them to really stick out farther than the book itself because it would look kind of funny, I think. Okay, so, and it looks like, we need any more there? No, that looks okay. Looks good. Looks like I might have a little bit of glue that showed there. So I will take my, this, is, this was a piece of uh, plastic from somewhere, but I made a point on the end of one, of one end. It has a little bit of glue showing there, so we're just getting rid of that. But it's nice for uh, scraping down into crevasses that you can't get to with uh, your fingernail or with uh, other instruments that you might have, tools that you might have. And that looks all even across there. It looks really nice there. And now we have our book. So what I do now is I go through, and I did a couple of pages already at the back, and I make sure my back is square. And I am going to need to, I'll, I'll tuck in a little more glue there and make sure that that uh, glue's a little better. It looks like it could have a little bit more glue right in there. But I'll do that after I finish today. Okay, so I, I make sure my back is square. And then I hold my pages to there. I'll turn it around so I can actually work on it. So my back is square. So you can see how that works. And then how far my pages come to. So it comes to there. So I put a little mark with my fingernail, or you can use a pencil, whichever you prefer. 
and you decide then whether you're going to take that page, three things you can do, well, more than three really, but you can take that page and you can fold it this way so you see the layout you have now. Let me get rid of these clamps. They're going to drive me crazy otherwise. And I'm far enough in that direction anyway, so let's make sure that that's okay. So you could have it where it's, it's folded this direction, or you could have it where it's folded this direction, or you could actually do a Z fold in it so that you get something in between that. Okay, so that the edge comes out to the edge here. Okay, so I like it. Which way did I say I thought I liked it? I think I like it this way. So where was that fold? It was right there. So we make our, make our bottom edge even with the bottom edge. We make our top edge even with the top edge. And we make a fold there. Okay. Now I like it. I think that I want more of these butterflies to show. So I'm going to put my... Um, ruler right along here and tear off about that much more. It will still have kind of a, a, a and I say white, the tan colored frame around the butterflies that are, uh, you know, these butterflies. So you've got this blue now. You see this blue more because you don't have that extra amount of tan, and that blue relates to these blue butterflies here. And when we stand it up again, you can see that that page is now the right width of the book. It's the same width as the book, and it sticks out about the same as the rest of them. So now we're ready for the next page, and we put our little fingernail mark there, and we decide if, if it's going to be, and this is just beautiful. I mean, I love those. Of course, I love these too, so I don't want any of them to disappear, and I think this time I'm going to do a Z fold, so I'll get rid of that little fingernail mark, and we're going to have it go to the, and have this come in so that we can see this page when we see the other page. So we're going to fold it like this. I'm going to hold it at the edge of the other pages. And then I'm going to do just an arbitrary fold. And I'm going to do it to the middle of that butterfly because I think that will look good on this page. And then to where it goes on the other page. Okay, so now I'm going to actually fold it by, by making sure my top and my bottom are even. Make that fold. Then I will make this other fold that I have uh, started. And we will see then these butterflies relating to those butterflies, of course. Beautifully. And you can still pull it out and write anywhere you want to write in this space. So... That's the next one. And these, I think, I think that looks okay on those. And if you don't, you can always, you know, adjust it. I mean, maybe you don't like it like that. Maybe you want to, to unfold these folds. You don't make these crispy folds until you're actually finished with the book. And maybe you want it to show even more of these. And if you do, then you can make it show even more of the butterflies here. Which, actually, I don't, I don't really want it to. I like it like that. So I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, this next one is already short enough, so I don't have to do anything to that one. So then the next one I need to, now you can, you can try doing it over here just with these other pages, but if you do, you're going to have pages. You have to make each one a little bit shorter than it was out there, because if you have it all the way out to these pages, you're gonna end up with the center of the uh, signature to be longer than the outside of the signature. Now you can hold them up like this and do it. And I need to turn off my computer over there because it's making some bling sounds and it's annoying. So I like this like this because I like the gold that relates to the gold that's in behind this butterfly. And this little bit of purple here relates to the purple of the butterfly there. And those are nice, but they're not distinctive. So I will just leave it like that and make mine like that. Again, we can hold it up to the to the back of the book so that the back of the book is flat against the table. Hold all our signatures up, and it's hard for you to see maybe, 
but that's what I'm looking at is this edge here so that all of them are to the edge even with this with this the back page okay so we've got that one even actually let's make sure that he's even top to bottom when we fold him make sure that it's even here Even there. Okay. And the next page, you notice that it's just barely not correct. And it's really difficult sometimes. You know, the third option, other than folding it, is to tear that off. So I have to tear off a little tiny bit, which may or may not work. So I put my ruler there and try to tear off that little tiny bit. Sometimes you can get it to work, or if it doesn't work, you can cut it off. It's not going to make that much difference that one thing is cut and one thing is torn. It's going to give you uh, the same illusion as being cut, basically, when you have it folded over. I mean, because it's a nice, nice, uh, you know, non-torn area. And if you notice, when I get to this point, I take it and any place that's a little too far out, I go ahead and trim that. And so I don't really have it torn all the way. And it's okay if it's not torn all the way. But if you want it to be torn all the way, all you have to do is take your scissors and hold them open and give that a little, a little slide along the edge of that. And it will roughen it up enough to make it, to make it look like it's been torn all that way instead of that you actually use your scissors on it. So if you're picky about the edges being... Uh, totally you know all torn instead of all cut if it's if it's all cut it's easy obviously you just cut it instead but if you want them to look like they're torn and you've actually cut it you just roughen it up with your or you can use a fingernail file or you can use a piece of sandpaper or you can use your fingernail itself but you know just run your scissors along the edge of that and it can make it look like it's been torn rather than cut okay so next, and I usually work like one signature at the back and then one signature at the front and then go to the back again and so on so that it, I get them even in the middle because I think if I work, I, the first time I did it, I worked just from the one back, from the back to the front and I ended up with, um, it, well, it started sticking out further and further as I went. So it's much better if you do it from the front first. And I kind of like this because this blue is the same color as that blue. And I don't have, ooh, and this will make this stick out like this and I will see that butterfly. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. And that's where I need to fold it, make sure it's even at the top and the bottom. Okay, so I like that, but I don't like quite all of this uh, extra uh, brown you know this see it's kind of like a frame don't necessarily like all that so i'm going to take off some of that and i'm going to kind of look first and i think that's how much i'm going to take off there right there so that should tear fine now if you want it to be more frayed instead of just you know straight you know nicely torn off like that then you can adjust your ruler. If you have like a plastic ruler, you can make it into a, a decal ruler, which is what I've done here. I've taken the uh, millimeter side and actually used my pliers to break off pieces of it. And that will give you a total, let me show you here, a total decal uh, look when you're, when you're, you know, I can tear against that very easily because that is the wrong way grain on the paper. But you see what I'm saying? It gives you a total torn put that under the edge really really torn look but I don't want that for this particular journal so I'm using my straight ruler instead of, <laughs> instead of my depot ruler that I made for myself and I saw that I learned that from Juanita Huffer who's also a journal maker I don't know if she has a YouTube or not I'll have to look it up and see if she does but I know she makes journals makes some beautiful stuff Okay, so the next one, I'm just going to tear it off, and I don't really care if it's a little bit shorter than the pages. 
but I know that I'm not going to just, I could just fold that in, couldn't I? I want to do that. Because sometimes when you fold this in, like if you fold in just this much, which is how much it was too extra, too much extra, then you can use that to make a something that flips out or make a pocket on this side or uh, extra pages on this side or whatever you want to do with that. You can get some interesting things going by making just a little teeny tiny fold like that. Let's see if it's right now. We'll hold these all up together. Fold in new. And you can, if you decide later you don't want that, you can always tear it off later. And it is not straight at all, so we're going to, we're not where it's supposed to be at all. So we're going to refold that. So it'll be out a little bit. It's hard to make that straight up and down because uh, you don't have any reference as to, you know, like, like I say, when you fold these... Make sure the top and bottom are even. You can't do that with this because it's too, too tiny. Okay, so I'm going to proceed on through this and then the next time you see me, I may show you how to do the fringe. I probably will have most of it done and I'll show you how to do one piece of fringe or so. And then we will do a flip through the book and we'll be finished. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, want to share this, I would be happy for you to do that. Please subscribe. Have fun. Have a great um, day today or tomorrow since it's nighttime for me. And um, just, you know, be safe. Have safe holidays. And I hope that your holidays are merry and bright and joyful and just... Um, I hope that you get through them. <laughs> Sometimes you have to just do that. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Thank you for watching. Bye.